In this video, I'm going to show you how you can service your own watch and save a lot of money. The watch you're looking at right here is a Swiss made 22 jewel watch. It's made by Concord and I purchased it around nine years ago. Over the past nine years, I've changed the battery several times and I also service the O-rings on the push buttons, the stem, as well as the case cover. So in this video, because I need to replace the battery, I'm going to show you exactly how it's done. So I'm going to change the battery. We're going to open up the watch, pop open the case, the cover, and inspect the O-ring, lubricate it, and possibly replace it. We're also going to take a look at the O-rings on the buttons as well as the stem. More than likely, I'm going to be removing those O-rings because it's been a few years since I've changed them. We're going to take a look at the jewels on the watch. Now the jewel, inside the watch you have the movement with all the gears and there's a shaft where the gear is. Each end of the shafts on those gears goes inside of a synthetic ruby. You'll see it when I open up the watch. You do not have to oil the jewels because it is a very, very hard material and it has a very low amount of friction. But what I like to do is take a very, very small amount of oil. In this case, I use sewing machine oil and I place just a drop in each one of those jewels. And that ensures that the movement works a lot easier with less friction. Okay, let's get started working on the watch. Now the first thing I want to do is show you everything that you're going to need to be able to service your watch. Now the cost of this stuff is relatively cheap when you compare it to how much a service would cost if I had to bring this watch in to have everything done. So whatever money you spend on tools initially, you're going to be saving in the long run every time you go to service your watch. Now when I show you all the stuff, I'm also going to place a link in the video description area to make it very easy for you to pick up all the items that you're going to need and I'll also include a coupon code to save you some money. I keep all my tools inside this padded case. It opens up and there's all different compartments in here. So rather than go into each compartment and show you what's in here, I'm going to take everything out, lay it on the counter and explain what everything is and what it does. When you're working on your watch, you want to make sure you don't scratch it. And you also don't want it sliding around on a smooth surface. So the best thing to do, go out and pick up an inexpensive mouse pad like you see right here. You're also going to need a small piece of leather or vinyl. And that's going to be used when holding the watch, especially when you go to remove the case cover. You're going to want an assortment of screws. This is for watches as well as eyeglasses. Very good to have in case you lose a screw, you can replace it. Over here is an assortment of O-rings, all different sizes to be used around the stem and push button. Right here is watch case O-rings. This tool right here is used on the watch band. Now the watch that I have has screws holding it together. Right here it's a tiny slot screwdriver. So all I have to do is unscrew that to open up the band. But some watches have pins that need to be pushed out and that's what this is for. Inside here, these brass pieces, they have a tip on them. Pick the right size that's going to fit into the hole to push the pin out of the band. Here's a small amount of sewing machine oil. You're also going to need a very tiny slot and fill up screwdriver right there. This is a watch case opener and I made my own out of this old drill bit. You can see right here it's got the flat end. And it fits perfect under the cover. And then I could just gently pry and it pops the cover off. Silicone grease for the O-rings. 
small flashlight to help you when you're looking very closely under magnification. Now the case that I have, when you look at this watch, all right, this case has to be popped off or pried off. Some watches will have a little notch there and on the opposite side they may have multiple notches and what you have to do is take a tool just like this, adjust the spacing of these two points, all right, so you make it smaller until it fits the notches on the watch case cover and then you could unscrew the cover from the watch. Make sure you have a few Q-tips, lint-free lens cleaning cloth, small little plastic cup, it's going to hold all your screws, a magnifying eye loop, this little tool right here holds the watch case, you lay the watch right in here, you can adjust it to different widths like this. And this would go in the center, and you can adjust this to hold it. All right. This right here is a press used to put the case cover back onto the watch. Once you check the O-ring seal and lubricate it, you have to push this case cover back on. And that's what this tool is for. It comes with many different sizes. And that's about it. Everything that you see here is all you need. There's also a very tiny needle right in here. This one right here. There's a hook on the end and I use that with the O-rings to be able to grab the O-ring to remove it from the shaft. Everything here along with a paper towel and you're good to go. Let's get started. Let me take the screw out of the band. Right over here. Take the little cup, place it off to the side, this way you don't lose anything. And I could lay that flat. This watch I just polished, it had a bunch of scratches. If you want to learn how to get your watch looking like this, beautiful shine, refer over here, circle with the eye. There's a separate video showing how you can do that, or you can wait to the end of this video and you'll see the other video shown. Now right over here is a little space underneath the cover, all right? And that's exactly where the tool right here, this case opener, would be positioned right there. I don't like this tool. I'm going to be using this one. It's going to reach right underneath and it's going to pop it right up. Before I do that, you want to grab the piece of leather. Take the leather Place it over the watch, just like that. Get this underneath, right in that edge, which is right there. All right. All right, popped open. There's the inside. And over here, all right, I'm going to inspect that at the end. If there's any nicks, I'm going to change the O-ring out and re-lubricate it. Okay, let me zoom in right to this area here. There's two screws holding the battery down. Over here are coil magnets. You do not want to damage those. If you do, the watch is not going to work right, and you're going to have to replace them. So avoid going anywhere near that very thin enamel wire on the coil magnets. Let me remove the battery. Okay. Let's loosen this one. 
should move. Okay. Now it's also a very good idea before you start touching anything in the watch, take a photograph and have it ready so if you forget where something goes, you can refer back to the image. Pop out the battery. Gentle like that. Okay, put that in the plastic container right here. All right, with that. The next thing I'm going to do is take off this screw right over here. This brass plate comes off. Okay. And you can see the screwdriver is magnetized. Another one here. And the cover should come off now. Let's see. There we go. We go like this. Place that to the side. Now if you look very closely with that cover removed, you can see right here all these little areas, these dots that are reddish in color. Those are jewels and they're nothing more than bearings and that's what I'm going to be applying a very small amount of oil to under magnification. I'm going to be doing that at the very end when I'm done replacing the O-rings on the two buttons and the stem. Now on this watch, in order to slide the stem out, I have to grab the crown, pull outward, and there's a little button right here that I need to press down on in order to release it. Okay, here we go. And look at that. There's a stem right there. Now in order to remove the entire movement from the case, there's another screw right down here and another screw right down here. Let me remove both of those and then this should pop right out. Now the two screws that hold the movement inside the case, when you remove them, you have this little piece right here. Be careful not to lose it. Okay, there's nothing holding the movement in place. So what I'm going to do is take this piece of leather, go this way, take the watch, turn it upside down, the movement will fall out. Once the movement is out, I'm going to position it to the side, then take a plastic cup and position it over the movement to keep dust off of the movement while I'm working on the watch. Okay. Let's go like this. Yep. And there it is. The movement is now out. Let's take this to the side. Put my cup over it and forget about it for a while and go back to the watch. Okay, here it is without the movement inside. What I'm going to do now is take my slot screwdriver, unscrew each one of the buttons so I'll be able to change out the O-rings. So let's do that next. Okay, there's the button with the spring right there. And over here is the screw, and around that screw is where the O-ring is at. Let me remove it, I'll come back and show you up close. You can see it's sticking out right there, so I'm going to push gently, and it's starting to come out on the inside. See it? I grab that carefully. Okay, that came out. 
dump it out carefully. Let me take this and place it in the bowl so I don't lose it. I'm going to do the same for this one. Okay. Now let's take a closer look at each one of these areas. In order to replace the very tiny o-ring which is inside this hole right here, you have to remove this washer which was in front of the o-ring. Once that's removed, you'll be able to reach in with a very tiny pick or the needle that I showed you earlier and remove that o-ring. Once the o-ring has been removed, you can compare it to the ones inside this plastic case to find the correct size. Let me do that and I'll be right back. And this is what it looks like when the o-ring, or in this case, two o-rings have been removed. Okay, one button is back in. Before I inserted the o-rings, I took just a little bit of the silicone grease, as you can see on the hook, reached inside the hole, and then inserted the two o-rings. Once the o-rings were in, the bolt slides from the inside to the outside, and then you apply the washer, and then the spring, and then the button. Tighten it down, and it's complete. All I did with the stem was clean away any corrosion, using this little screwdriver to get in there to pick any away. Took a little tiny brush, brushed it, and then once that was done, I reached inside. The O-ring is inside the crown, and I don't see any way to replace it. It looks like it was inserted, and then this top ring was pressed into position. So what I have to do is make sure that that O-ring is still pretty good, and the only way to tell is to lubricate the O-ring with the silicone grease, by reaching in, lubricate the outside of this tube, and then when I slide it in, I'm going to try wiggling it. It should not wiggle at all, and when I go to pull it off, I want to make sure I feel some drag, and I did. So this stem is all ready to go back inside that tube. The inside of this tube also had a lot of corrosion, and right now it's perfectly clean. This little jeweler screwdriver fit right inside there. I was able to scoop away all the debris, clean it up with a very tiny little rag on the tip of the screwdriver, and I applied a small amount of silicone grease. Let me finish this button on this side now. Once that's done, I'm going to clean the inside of the crystal. You can see there's some smudges in there, so I'm going to use a lint-free cloth with some cleaner, get that nice and clean. I'll take the Q-tip, push down on the lint-free cloth so it reaches every little area of the inside of the crystal. Switch this around, take another area of the lint-free cloth and continue to wipe until it's crystal clear. Once that's done, I'm going to take the movement and reinstall it. Push it all the way down. And the O-rings are already inside, two of them, lubricated with silicone grease. And now I'm going to take the washer. You have to be very, very careful with these washers. I stuck this one to the tape because it's very easy to lose them when you go to put them down. Sometimes they get hung up and while trying to release them, they can go bing and then you're never going to see them again. So when you take the washer out, put your hand over it when you try and release it from the needle tweezers. Just reach under so the screw can't be pushing back inside the watch case. Let me grab the o-ring, looking good, let me slide it down just a little further, there we go. Now I could put the spring with the button right over that and tighten it down. Okay, both buttons are now reinstalled. The tube is all ready to go for the stem once the watch movement is placed back inside. And you can see how nice and shiny it is. 
clean the outside of the crystal. Very good stuff to use for cleaning is this stuff right over here. It's called ROR. And what it does, it dissolves any oil. It works great on camera lenses. It works great on microscopes. It works great on anything where you may have any residue of oil. So there is some residue from the silicone grease on the inside. And this stuff right here, using a lens tissue, will remove it. So let's get that clean. Right in this area here, it's all smudged. So what I'm going to do is take the lens tissue, apply one drop of the cleaner, place it inside, and then use the Q-tip to guide it all around on the glass. Now I'm going to lift that off, take a clean spot, wipe all the way around into the corners. I'm going to allow that to dry for a minute. And now I'm going to take a little bit more using a different Q-tip, rub it all the way around, make sure it's in the corners, get a dry end of the Q-tip, wipe all the way around, keep going to a dry area, keep moving around. Okay, that's looking really, really clean now. Let me get one more piece of lens tissue with a brand new Q-tip wipe over the inside of the crystal, and then I'm going to turn it over, hold it against the light, and make sure it's crystal clear. I'm going to take the watch movement. I just washed my hands. You can also use cotton gloves, or right before handling it, take some rubbing alcohol and make sure your fingertips have been wiped down thoroughly. Allow the alcohol to dry, then pick up the watch movement. Right over here, this is where the stem was, it's going to be, very, very, very carefully, drop it into position. And there it is. Slide it just a little bit to there. Now before I put the two screws back in with the washers to lock the movement into the case, one here and one over there, I'm very carefully going to slide the stem back in. I'm going to apply a very thin film of silicone grease to that stem. And then once it starts to go in, I'm going to go right here, push down on this button, and allow it to lock in. Okay, here we go. Go right there. Okay. Be very, very carefully push down on the button. And I think that's in. Let's see. Now I'm going to take these little washers right here that holds the movement inside the case. Two of those along with the very small screws right there. Put that one in and put that one in. Once they're both in and secured, I'm going to come back and then make sure this goes all the way in and locks. Okay, the movement is back inside the case, locked in with the two screws with those angled washers, and I made sure the stem is working properly as well as the buttons. Let me flip it back over. Now the next thing I'm going to do under magnification is I'm going to oil each and every one of these jewels or jewel cups all through here and all through there. And as I said earlier, you can use sewing machine oil or oil specifically designed for watches. Let me give you a close-up of what a jewel cup looks like. All right, under high magnification, we're taking a look at that plate. Off to the side, there's three more. Right there, you see those three. So I'm going to be oiling each one of those. The shaft in the center. That's where the oil would be applied. In order to lubricate the jewel cups, I'm going to take a sewing needle or a straight pin. 
apply a little bit of oil. You're going to dip the needle into the oil, just a little bit of the tip, and then on each cup, I'm going to just touch it like that. The oil will transfer and fill up the cup. You don't want to flood anything. You just want to make sure there's oil in that cup. I'm going to do that to each and every one of these jewel cups. When it's complete, I can then replace this cover right here. Install the battery, lubricate the O-ring, and snap the cover back in place. So let me show you how this is done with the needle. I'm going to place some oil in this cap so I can dip my needle in it. There is oil in there. You can see the shine. In order to do this properly and very precise, I'm going to hold the watch in my hand. I'm going to take a jeweler's eye loop or an eye loop like you see here. This is 10 or 15 times magnification. And while looking through the eye loop and holding the watch, I can then dip the needle and deposit the oil exactly into the cup. I'm going to do that and then show you exactly what it looks like up close after the oil has been deposited. All right, each and every one of these jewel cups on this plate, that plate, and on this entire central plate has oil in it. You notice there's nothing overflowing, it's just enough to fill the cup, and that is it. Now that that step is complete, I can install this plate again. With the plate in position, I can now take the very, very tiny screw you see here, reinstall one of them right there, the other one over here, then I can reinstall the battery with the plate across the battery, lubricate the O-ring, and snap the back cover in place. One, and that's two. That plate's back. Now I can reinstall the battery. This is like an operation, as you can see. Just make sure this one here is still tight. And that's down secure. Alright, the battery's installed. The jewels are oiled. The cover plate's back on. The next step now is to take a look at this cover. Inspect this O-ring. Make sure there's no flaws in the O-ring. Take some of this silicone grease. Apply it to the cover. Line it back up and push it back in place. Let's grab a cloth first. Wipe around the edge. Any debris. Okay. 
and apply new grease. The tip of my finger has a little bit on it. I'm just going to hold it on the edge, roll around one pass. And that looks good. So the cover is ready to go back on. The cover has a little notch right there. And that notch goes where the stem is, right over there. Push it in position. Okay. The word Concord has to be straight. Right there. Add some padding. By adding the padding, it helps prevent any damage to the front of the watch when you push this down. So this is lined up. Now I usually do it by hand. Like that. All right, this side is still out. All right, it's all back together. If you have a problem doing this by hand, then you're definitely going to want to have the tool I showed you earlier. This lower section here, which is flat, goes against the cover and this curved section goes on the top of the watch. You see it's got the curve, it'll go around the edge. So you would take it just like this, all right? And then you would squeeze. And that would ensure the cover is fully on. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.